Hey guys, I'm out here in the desert outside of Tucson, Arizona, kind of on the top of the mountain, uh, which is appropriate because I'm here in the 2018 Jeep Wrangler. I'm going to start out this afternoon by driving over and around a pretty serious path that Jeep has set up for us to test the off-road ability of the legendary Wrangler. But I'm going to follow up both today and this weekend by driving different variants of the car in town to see how it does as a day-to-day -day vehicle, because let's face it, people daily drive Wranglers constantly. Overall, I think the vehicle looks good and I'm super excited to get started. Even though it's nicer to drive on a paved road than ever, Wrangler is still an off-road focused vehicle first and foremost. Jeep engineers were tasked with making the JL model even more off-road capable than the outgoing JK. We'll talk more about the new full-time four-wheel drive setup in a second. For the big-time off-roading, you'll want a more conventional command track 4x4 system with the two-speed trans case and solid Dana axles front and rear. Or, as on the Rubicon versions you see here, the rock track system with a heavier Dana 44 axles along with standard true lock front and rear locking differentials. Of course, every Wrangler is trail rated and now running 33 inch tires, which make crawling on and around some big boulders here in Tucson a reasonably easy thing to do. The standard skid plates definitely took some hits as I made my way over the torture test, but that's what they're there for. And ultimately, I was happy to find that even for a vehicle with a longer wheelbase, navigating tight turns and narrow tracks is no issue. So I've just transitioned from being on top of the hill wheeling, as they say, to being on a very smooth paved road and a really nice subdivision. And I've got to say that for all the Jeep is incredible off-road, I'm a lot more impressed by what I'm seeing and hearing or not hearing on this road here. This is the four-door Sahara version with the powered soft top and really is going to be kind of a volume seller for your Jeep. But this is also a Wrangler that is easier to live with day to day than I think any other version of the model ever in history, basically. Now, just like the Rubicon that I was driving up on the hill, the power under the hood comes from a two liter turbo four that was developed by Jeep and is making its debut in this Wrangler. For those of you with long enough memories to remember the last time Jeep did a turbo four, you might have low expectations. But believe me when I say that this is a fantastic motor for this package. The 2.0T is connected up to an 8-speed transmission, which does all the shifting pretty smoothly and painlessly for me. And it's making a really good amount of power, 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, which is enough to make it not feel fast, but it's certainly got all of the juice that it needs when you really want to go. One other interesting thing that you get with a 2.0T and this 8-speed automatic that you've never gotten in the past is what is essentially a real-time four-wheel drive mode for Jeep. You've always had to sort of select two-wheel drive, four-wheel high or low, and now there's a setting on the system called four-wheel auto, which essentially does a lot of the thinking for you relative to what's happening under the tires in terms of traction and grip. Ultimately, what's really impressive is the civility of this Wrangler. Noise, vibration, and harshness have been reduced. The coefficient of drag has gone down a lot, so the vehicle is just a little bit more slippery, it's more fuel efficient, but it's also easier to drive day to day. This is never gonna be a vehicle with what you would call plush ride quality, but it's such a dramatic improvement over the previous Wrangler that I think current owners who are looking to move up or people who might've been scared away by a, a four-door Wrangler in the past will be pretty impressed with what they find. I know I am. Now, a Wrangler Unlimited Sahara like this starts around $37,000, and you can certainly get them up around forty. dollars So if what you're looking for is refinement, this isn't the first place that you would go. You really do want to need the ability to go off-road in a pretty serious manner, but would like to have a little bit more luxury and comfort around you before you start looking at a car like this. Fuel economy is going to be another downside. Uh, we don't have the official EPA numbers for the 2.0T yet, but we do know that the standard V6 maxes out at, I think, 23 miles per gallon on the highway, uh, which is not great for the size or class. There also isn't a ton of room in the cabin. My knees are kind of banging the center console and my other knee is almost hitting the door handle here, let alone trying to sit behind myself in the back seat. So it is not the most spacious cabin in the world. Let's face it, driving a Wrangler instead of a more traditional SUV or crossover is always going to be a little bit of a compromise. Why? Because you have legendary off-roading ability and when you're driving it on-road, you just don't need a lot of that stuff. What's good to know is that for this 2018 model, it's far less of a compromise than it ever has been in the past, which is really pretty cool. 